Hi folks, I thought I would take a few minutes here and give you a basic tutorial about doing electric work. If you've never done any before, this will give you kind of some basics. If you have done some before, this should hopefully confirm that you're doing it the right way. Or if you don't do it and you have to hire an electric contractor, at least you'll have a sense of what they're doing to be assured that they're doing things the right way. Let's start first with the wire that's in your house, the main wire that you use to run circuits for your electricity is basically this stuff. It's called Romex and it comes in different sizes and different applications. This particular type of wire I have here is 12-2 Romex. Uh, 2 stands for these two conductors here. You can see the white and the black. The bare wire isn't counted in there and we'll talk about that in a minute. 12 has to do with the gauge or the thickness of the wire. With electric wire, typically the thicker the wire, the smaller the number. So this is 12 gauge. Um, you also sometimes see electric circuits that are run on 14 gauge. That would be a little thinner wire than this um, and, and so on. There are others that, are in, that you can get as well. Now typically this Romex is used for most of your 110 slash 120 volt applications. It also can be used for 220 lines like for example baseboard electric heat is run using 12-2 uh, Romex uh, works fine for the baseboards and the and the thermostats and so on so it can handle that kind of load but it's the the main workhorse uh, as far as uh, electric wiring that's used. This stuff's been around for 30 years or so um, even before then there was a version of it that was somewhat similar. You can see it's got a plastic outer jacket and then this it's secondarily insulated with an inner insulating um, coating over these two wires uh, in white and black and that's what is typically used. Now we have a national electrical code in this country to try to standardize how wiring is done. That's for safety's sake that also gives uh, electricians the ability to do things the way they're supposed to. So uh, typically speaking in most electric if not all electrical applications the bare wire here is the ground. It doesn't need extra insulating because typically it won't be carrying any kind of electric load. It's there for safety uh, to take away any kind of shorts or to trip out a breaker if something goes wrong with an electric circuit it's a safety feature. The black um, coated wire is what's called the hot leg or the leg or the wire that carries the electric load to from the panel box to your receptacle, your switch, your your light, whatever. This is the one that is electrified. The white wire is the, the neutral return uh, that is completing the circuit by bringing the circuitry back to the panel box and typically that doesn't have much electricity and it depends on on how uh, the electricity is flowing but but typically again that just completes the circuit makes the electricity work uh, and as we're going to see when you're doing wiring it's important to remember your colors as, as to what goes where uh, because that way everything will work the way it's designed and also then there's less chance of anybody having an accident touching a hot wire when they don't mean to or a hot screw when they don't mean to so um, that's why the wire looks like it does now another common wire that you will find that I have here in another roll is actually 123 and this comes in 14.3 or 10.3 or whatever, depending on the thickness of the wire. The only difference between this and what I showed you before is that there's an extra strand of wire in the bundle. This one is insulated with a red coating on it. Um, and that is primarily used for running um, a connection from one light switch to another. If you have one switch operating a light, you'll use a single pole switch and we'll talk about those in a minute uh, and you use two wire if you have a room where you've got more than one entrance so you need more than one light switch 
you will use this wire 12-3 or 14-3 depending on how you have it uh, how you have it uh, connected at your panel box uh, the 12 12 wire is uh, rated for a 20 amp breaker um, 14 wires rated for a 15 amp breaker so this holds a heavier load but if you're going to need more than one switch for your application then you'll use it what they call a three-way switch if you have two switches you use two three-way switches and you need this extra wire in the bundle between them in order to make sure that uh, the electricity will work on and off properly from either switch now on top of that if you're in a situation where you need more than two switches to operate a light a circuit um, you'll still put the three-way switches at either end and in the middle of your run you'll need four-way switches depending how many on-off situations you've got uh, but that's another story in there for relatively complicated to wire that we won't get into right now but you're still going to use this three wire 12 3 14 3 between all of them so that's for primarily for multiple switched lights circuits uh, but you will see this in houses too and there are a couple other applications with three wire three stranded uh, wire some of the heavier heavier uses for example um, a typical electric dryer is a 10 3 uh, wire it has got the three plus the ground um, and there there are a couple others but primarily we're looking at this as um, between light switches so these are the two main types of wire that are probably in your house that that you'll be dealing with um, let me just talk a little bit about switches and receptacles with you too now the main way that you get electricity to access your electricity is with a wall receptacle looks something like this as you can see it's got uh, this is called a duplex receptacle because you can put two plugs in at one location also it has three openings to put your plug in now typically people will mount these this way with the large hole down that's the ground opening so if you've got a three prong plug the larger circular blade on that plug goes into the ground of course the left hand one is a bit larger than the other that is your neutral uh, plug for your uh, that your white wire would go there and your right hand opening is for the hot leg uh, your black wire so when you're putting your plug in if you have one of those polarized plugs you know that the one blade is thicker than the other you can't plug it in backwards it has to go in that the large one goes in the left the small one goes in the right and then the round one on the bottom that's normal now how do you connect these up well typically what you're going to do is you're going to take your 12 2 first of all your ground wire here is going to wrap around this is your ground screw that's grounding the receptacle it's carrying the ground to your plug and that's for safety that's attached that way and when it's secure then that receptacle is grounded your white wire is going to go on these silver screws on the left hand side with a typical receptacle if you only have one wire going in it doesn't matter which of the two you put them on uh, they give you more than one because obviously if you have more than one set of wires in your box you might it's easier to just put one around each screw rather than trying to wrap more than one set of wires around it on the right hand side you have brass screws and that's for your hot wire your black wire and again if you need more than one you've got two screws there uh, there are a few other things you can do with the receptacle I won't get into the specifics on that there's a way to split them off if you have two applications from one receptacle and also a lot of these now have these quick connect holes in the back instead of stripping this wire off uh, and wrapping it around the screw you can actually just strip it off maybe a half an inch and stab it right in the hole and then that holds it in place for you and then there's a little tab below there that you can release the grip that's on it if you have a small bladed screwdriver but that's your typical receptacle that's your normal usage will at some future point in our uh, remodel here you'll see me installing one but that's how it works and it's basically like I said with the with the 12-2 or 14-2 wire that's what you're going to use 
for your typical 110. This is a 110 volt receptacle, not for 220. The, the higher uh, voltage receptacles have a different configuration uh, that you couldn't accidentally put the wrong plug in either to this one or to another. If you have, say, a large air conditioner in your window, a large window air conditioner, you might have a 220 volt one. You need a special plug in a 220 line for that. You just can't plug it into a regular receptacle. Um, so that's, that's how that works. Now, while we're talking here about the bathroom, let me also show you another GFI. You saw that I had mounted one uh, into the next to the vanity there and I've got another one to put in. If you look on here you can see it's got the same sets of three holes and it's also a duplex but it's got some other features. It's got um, these two buttons in the middle one is for reset and one is for test. If you want to make sure that the ground fault interrupter is working you push the test button and if it pops the reset or pops the reset button out you know you're protected then you just push that so that it works when you hit the test button that should turn off whatever this is plugged into um, and then on the back as you can see just like the other one um, you see that there is uh, your ground screw is here, it's on the bottom here, but you still put the bare wire in the ground screw. But then, what's different, on the back, you can see here it says line, and underneath this protective strip or warning strip, it says load. Now, the reason for that is, and you still have your screws, see brass for the black uh, wire and... Uh, silver for the white one so that doesn't change but what you do is you bring your line coming in that's bringing your electricity to this box and you want to put it on the screws that are marked line that means the line coming in the load screws are for if you want to have more receptacles on this circuit but you don't want to pay for more ground fault uh, receptacles, you can still get ground fault protection as long as the wires leaving this box are put on the load. So basically the term is downstream. Anything downstream is also protected by this ground fault. Uh, it's a cheaper way to get more than one receptacle on that, although if I'm going to run a, a, a series of, of receptacles that all need to be ground fault, I just put a ground fault breaker in the panel box. That's simpler. I did see a kitchen one time where every kitchen receptacle, they put one of these in. And I thought, well, somebody either didn't know what they were doing was providing overkill or they had a lot of money to pay an electrician because it wasn't necessary. But they did it that way, and it meant that every... Uh, receptacle was ground fault protected. But at any rate, um, that's, that's what you have to do. You have to make sure you use the line. And if you're going to go out of this box to another receptacle that's not going to be GFI protected, if it's going to another room or something, you've got to make sure that you put all your wires in the line side of this, not onto the load, or they will be counted. You also do not want to bring your line coming in and putting it on the load receptacle. You won't get ground fault protection. It has to go onto the line, and that's why it's marked the way it is. That's why they put this warning strip on so that you know. Finally, let's look really quickly here. This is a typical single pole switch, a toggle switch as you can see, and you can see it's single pole just by looking at it very quickly because it says off and on. Uh, in a three-way or a four-way switch, it doesn't say off or on because you never know what position the switch is going to be in when you have multiple switches as to whether the circuit's on or off, but with one, you do know. Now, typically, uh, what you do is you've got your three-wire coming in. Again, you put your um, bare ground wire onto the green screw here, and then you're going to take your um, black wire coming in and wrap it around one of these screws. You can actually put it on either one because it's either going to flow electricity this way or this way. The switch in the middle is what breaks or, or makes the circuit. But what you'll do on a light switch is um, the power coming in, you're only going to use the black wire on this switch. Your white wire is going to be 
tied off to the other white wire that's coming in from the other set of wires, you're going to need at least two sets of wires to have, uh, have a switch operate. And what you would do is then the other black wire that's running right up to your light or appliance, whatever it is, will go on to the other brass screw. And then your white wires will get uh, stripped off, twisted together, and wire nutted as you're carrying. You don't have to bring the neutral line through the switch in order for it to work, is what I'm saying. So that's basically how a single pole switch works. Again, when you flick it to on, that makes the electricity be able to flow through from one to the other, or again, if you get it on the opposite way, it doesn't matter. Electricity is going to flow either way. And then when you turn it off, that breaks the circuit inside so the electricity can't go all the way to the light and it turns the light off. So it's relatively easy um, to do that. And again, these also have the little stab locks in the back if you choose to use them rather than wrapping the screws. Um, Again, let me emphasize that electric, electric work can be easy to do as long as you use common sense safety. Always, always, always make sure that your power is off at the source when you're working on already established circuits. And if you're running new lines, new circuits, always work from the end of the line back towards the panel box so that there's no danger that you could uh, have forgotten to turn a breaker off while you're still working on connect completing the circuit. You always want to work towards the hot panel box, the electrified panel box, and make that your last connection. That's what I'm doing here with this. But also, as I said, if you are doing some repair on an already existing circuit, always make sure that that's turned off. And we'll do another tutorial about basic electric tools and I'll show you some of the testers that you can use if you're not sure to make, to be aware whether or not your circuit is hot or it's turned off. So it's not hard to do, but common sense safety is always important when it comes to electricity, and we don't want anybody to get hurt, suffer any kind of injuries or worse. But it is doable, and these are the basics. And we'll get back to you with another tutorial about some of the tools and the methods and then you'll see me wire some receptacles and switches and so on just to show you how I do it and hopefully that'll help you along. At least as I said if you don't want to do it yourself at least you can be assured that when you hire an electrician they know what they're doing. So thank you for watching. Don't forget to subscribe to our channel.